We're visiting one of the state's most beautiful areas today, the wine country of Northern California. And you know, this area has seen a renaissance of sorts the last couple of years. What was once known just as a man's world has quickly turned into the stomping ground of women. Where the boys are, for decades that's been the theme of the wine industry in California. A male-dominated field, women weren't even allowed to drink wine in public until after prohibition. But the tide is starting to turn. When I started out 30 years ago as a writer in New York City, I was on food stamps and I collected 321 rejection slips from ma magazines and newspapers. Handed a glass of this wine blind from now on. Working in the prestigious wine department of the Culinary Institute of America in Napa, which is often called the Harvard of wine education, Karen has reached the pinnacle of success unattained by many women or men. It's interesting today, you know, the chairman of the wine department of the Culinary Institute of America in the Napa Valley, the author of the Wine Bible, I have my own television show. But it's true, some mornings I wake up and I think, oh my God, look, it's all happened. One of Karen's colleagues is Susanna Harris of Chateau Souverain in the Alexander Valley. An assistant winemaker at the winery, she's part of an emerging trend of female winemakers in the state. They know how to teach us, and that's one of the key things I'm not sure goes on on the male side, is here we have this wonderful group of females. So do you have a particular favorite, or you know, you can say that all oh, my favorite, that'll work too, but... <laughs> if you go to work with a smile on your face, and you leave work, maybe the smile is a little less, but you wake up the next morning and you still have a smile on your face, then come and work in this industry. And one more way that women are making their mark in the wine industry is through marketing, like here at the newest and hottest wine bar to hit San Francisco. Vino Venue opened in September of 2004 by Lynn Slattery and Nancy Rowland. The idea was hatched during a trip to Europe, and now they're the only automated wine dispensing bar in the country. These cards come in increments of 10, 20, 50, or 100. What you do is you put it into the wine station, you see what your balance is, then you see the price per one ounce pour above every bottle, and then you select your wine, put your glass underneath, hit the, hit the button and get your wine. You know, there are a lot of, lot of women coming in. In fact, the trends that we hear about is it's mostly women who are buying the wines for the household. And when they're not making new places to drink wine, women are making new wines to drink. Over at Behringer Blast, three women are hedging their bets on a little white lie. You see, that's the name of their new lower-calorie, lower-alcohol Chardonnay. You know, I think what always bothered me was the fact that you saw wines out there uh, occasionally being marketed to women, where it was just something about the label. As soon as they saw, they saw the name White Lie, they started to laugh and they started to, you know, it was just all about having fun for them, which is what, which is really what wine should all be about. Yes, when ladies come in here, they're looking for wines for dinner, uh, wines for gifts, etc. And uh, they're a pleasure to deal with. From teaching to winemaking to marketing, women are leaving their imprint on the wine industry, and gradually the wine country is starting to see that a woman's place isn't in the kitchen, but in the vineyards. So if there's a new motto for the wine country, it might just be where the boys aren't. What other job could you have that you're so passionate about? You're passionate about the wine, but about what you're doing and how you're doing it. It's, it's really, really a terrific industry to be in.